Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at this scatter plot. And I'll be taking you through how to set it up and how to configure it. And we'll be looking at one practical example. Okay, so let's get started. So the scatter plot is another standard visual within Power BI. And I'm just going to go and we're going to add one in here. Just create a little bit of space there. So in this example here, I'm just going to take in the data model first of all. We have got the simple data model here. So in it, we've got a list of different machines. So these are all pumps. And each one of these pumps has got just a, a three bits of data. So the first bit of data here is the number of hours it's run since it had a last major overhaul. The next is the number of defect reports that's been created against it, so number of work orders and number of defects that pumps had. And the final one is the cost to actually, the, the total cost since its last overhaul to repair the pump. So the corrective repairs that have been, to repair the defects that have been taking place. Okay, so that's the data model there. So the objective here is to understand if there's a, a correlation between the number of hours the pumps run and the cost to over the cost to actually carry out the, the defect repairs with a view to understanding when is the best time to go and carry out a major overhaul of the pump. So when has there been too many small defects that it becomes um, practical and cost effective to overhaul the actual pump itself, which is quite a considerable sum of money. So let's get started. So I'm going to go and we can see here there's quite a number of different field wells in here um, and we'll go through these in, in this video and I'm going to create a follow-on video as well because I'm going to split it into two parts because there's two kind of case studies here. So for the first one we're going to go and look at this machine tag and that's going to be the detail. So we can see there's just one dot here. Now with a scatter plot you're really looking to put um, x and y axis together and that allows you to get a coordinate. Okay so we're looking for numerical values in this example here. So I've created a number of measures here. So I've created some, some of these explicit measures. So the first one we're going to put into the x-axis is going to be the number of hours that it's run. Okay, and I'll just quickly show you this. It's a really, really straightforward. And it's really just the sum of the machine history, machine maintenance history, and it's run hours since last overhaul. Okay, so we've got some sort of counter in the background here. I've aggregated the data in the data model, but it'd be some sort of counter that clocks up how many hours this machine has run since it last had a major overhaul. So now we can see that spread along the x-axis. and the y-axis, we're going to look at the defect. So the defect, again, really straightforward, is just the sum of the cost of def uh, defects to repair. Okay, and this is the defects since the last overhaul. So it's assumed that once a, a pump is, has gone through a major overhaul, it's as good, more or less as good as new. So we can reset the counter on the hours run and reset the counter on the, the cost of defect repairs. So let's go and add that into the y-axis. So here we can see this is a dot that represents each of the different pumps. And we can see that each of these pumps has got the x and y coordinates plotted and it's got the, the the number of hours and the cost of the defect repairs. Okay, so the number of hours in the y-axis and the cost of the defect repairs. And there's a little dot for each one of those. And we want to be able to see if there is a correl first of all, is there a correlation between the um, the hours run and the defect repairs cost. So let's go and we'll start to kind of work through the different options. But before I get into looking through the different formatting options, Let's just add in a trend line. So there's various different lines you can add in here. Um, we're going to look at three of these. We're going to look at the trend line. We're going to look at the X and the Y axis, axis constant lines as well. So we're going to add a trend line. And straight away, we can see that's added in a best fit line. And it's tried to kind of, and there's definitely a, co a, um, a correlation. Now, it doesn't mean to say there's a causation, but there's definitely a correlation. There's definitely a link there. It looks like there's a link. And the longer the the pump has run. So the, the, the higher the, the, the run hours since the last overhaul, the, the higher the repair cost. Okay, so it's, it's, that's the correlation there. So the next thing we want to do is just take a little look at some of the actual options that we can use for formatting this. Okay, so 
nothing in general. There's this data volume here that um, I'm not 100% sure what that does. Um, it looks like it's some sort of cap on the, the number of data points. Um, but I've played about with it and didn't see what we do in terms of this data model that I've got here. So we'll skip past that one. Um, the X and Y axis. So there is a couple of options here. You can you can start the X and Y axis and end it um, where it was where, where values that you define. I've just left it at auto because I think that is appropriate for here. If it's auto, it starts at zero, which is fine. Um, there is an option here um, to change. We'll use it the Y axis to change the scale type from linear, which is just how most scales work, so just a, a linear scale, to a logarithmic scale, which basically has a scale which is um, each each data point is 10 times bigger than the previous one. So that's a 1,000, that's 10,000, that's 100,000. So it just, um, if you've got quite a, um, a broad range of data points, it might be impractical to display them all on one axis and you can put it in a log axis, but you do need to make sure that people understand that that's what they're seeing there. So we'll change it back to linear. And you've got the usual stuff here. You can invert the axis as well. And that means you start at zero. And um, the, the zero is at the top rather than the bottom. And the zero is at the left instead of the right. Um, or the right instead of the left if you do it on the, the x-axis. We don't need to do that in this example here. But it is available. And there's a few just the usual formatting options here. So that is the x and y axis. Zoom sliders, I don't really think these are that practical to use, but you can use these to if you wanted to zoom in. Perhaps if you're using a massive amount of data that might be useful to just zoom in in a particular area. Uh, so they're available just as a standard if you want to use those. And you can switch them off and on for each one of the um, X or Y axis as well if you only want to use it on one of them or the other. Data colors, so you can actually um, Choose a default colour. I'm happy enough with this colour here, but you can go in and you can allocate a colour to each of the different values on here. And then you can also choose the size and the see here the standard the, the standard size. Um, I'm just going to leave it at minus ten. I think that's fine for this. And also the shape. Um, again, I, I probably wouldn't choose any other shape. It, around it just kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, so I just leave it round. It's, it's my thoughts on this one here. Uh, let's take these zooms off. Okay, so just working down here. Is there any other options here? The plot area. Uh, we're going to cover that in the second video. So you can put a, um, you can change the the plot area, put an image, or put some color behind it. Um, and then the category. So this category allows us to actually allow us to see each of the different um, tags that are being mentioned. So each one of these is, a, is, the, is the category and each one of these is actually a, a, a machine. So this is useful, very useful. If you've got a low number of data points, this is probably a little bit too many and it just looks a little bit cluttered. But if you've got a lower number of data points, it can be really useful to see exactly where each of those categories or each of those piece of equipment in this example here sit um, within within the actual, um, within the scatter plot, purely because otherwise you've just got to go and hover over it to see which one's which. So that can be really useful. We'll switch it off for just now. This one here just allows you to put a board around each one of them. So fill or non-fill. I'm going to leave it fill for just now. Let's make that slightly bigger. And then we've got this color by option. And that just automatically allocates a different color to each category. Okay, so if you, if again if you had if these colours did mean something, now I would I would I personally I would not use this because the colour could be used to to could be quite confusing and uh, it doesn't really make too much sense to put a different colour unless you've got something that is actually a colour that you're representing in in each of the categories. Um, but no, I would I would stay away from the colours, but um, it's available if you want to. And then the rest of the options in here are pretty standard. You've got the title here. I'm just going to leave that as a, as a standard title. I'll probably put a bit more thought into it. But we're just going through the, the different configuration options just now. Um, and the rest of that stuff is just really the borders, the shadows, all of the, the usual bits and pieces. So that is the first piece here. So the next part we're going to do is to add some more trend lines. Well, not trend lines, lines. So, like I mentioned, we're trying to understand if there's a, an optimal time to carry out this major piece of maintenance. 
So I'm going to put in a y-axis constant link here and I'm going to put in here that this is cost of major overhaul. Okay, that's the name of that. And the value there is going to be £60,000. Okay, so the cost of the major overhaul is £60,000. And I want to also show, if I scroll down here, you can change the colour. I'm happy enough with that colour. Um, it looks okay. It kind of fits in with the rest of the, the, rest of the palette here. Um, it's dashed. And, um, but the, the piece at the bottom here is this label. So you want to actually turn this label on. And once you turn the label on, there's a few additional options that are, are available. And I want to see the value and the name. Okay, so cost of major overhaul. Let's just make it slightly bigger. And um, we can see that that's, that's there. So here's a repair cost, but I've overlaid that with the cost of the major overhaul, which is 60,000. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like you can format this um, this value here. I'd like to see that with a comma in it, just so you can see clearly the 60,000. But um, we can see cost of our major haul at 60,000. In fact, actually, what I will do is I'll just change it slightly, just so we've got the units there in brackets, pounds, or you could use dollars or whatever their currency is. Um, okay, so that's that one. Now, the next one I'm going to put in here is a X constant link. So that's going to draw a line up through the chart from a point on the X axis. And I'm going to add in here the um, service in inter interval. So this is the service interval that's been recommended. Um, we'll put in 7,000. Okay, so 7,000 hours is the manufacturer's recommended service interval. And I'm going to go and scroll down a little bit further, display the label. I want to display the value and um, service interval 7000. Okay, so just now what we can see is that there's definitely a, 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 a relationship between the, the, the actual repair cost and the number of hours it's run, which is fine. Some pieces of equipment have got really low repair costs, but well, that's okay. They're, they're well below the service intervals. But interestingly enough, we can see that there's a few pieces of equipment that are well above their service interval, but they've got a low number of pieces of equipment, a low number of um, repair costs. So these things, these here, are a piece of equipment you might want to leave to one for a little bit longer. So rather than do a blanket piece of maintenance on every single piece of equipment at 7,000 hours, you might think, well, okay, this one here is definitely going to get done at 7,000 hours because it's already breached a 60,000 pounds overhaul. So we really want to Whenever it goes above £60,000, we want to basically say, right, okay, that's, a, that's enough on defect repairs. We're going to spend another £60,000 to actually go and do a complete overhaul. Um, these ones here, definitely, we've left them a little bit to run past their, their service intervals. They're at 9,200 hours, and this one is 9,100 hours. So they're definitely going to be candidates for, for, for carrying out an overhaul. Um, and this one here, now it's cost... Has not yet breached this value here. Either is this one here. So you might want to leave. We might want to leave them, and we might be able to push this service interval out to closer to this point here. So we can see just by using a scatter plot with a little bit of um, a little bit of use of the standard lines that we can add in the analysis lines that are underneath this um, analytics section here, starting to help us to answer some questions around when is the best time to overhaul certain pieces of equipment. Now there is one other piece of the puzzle, and that is, if I look across here, each piece of equipment has got a number of defects. So it may be that a piece of equipment has got a very high number of defects, but they've just not yet cost us too much money. Now if we've got a high number of defects, then that means that the equipment's going to be potentially unavailable for periods of time, which is not good. So in order to see that layered on top of the uh, the defect repair cost and the hours since the last service was run, we can use another one, another um, option in here, which is a size. Okay, so each one of these can have a size that represents another dimension. So let's just copy this, pull it off to one side, and I'm going to pull in 
this defect count, which again is a very straightforward measure. It's just a sum of the number of defects in the report. And I'm going to pull that into this size here. Okay. I'll copy the one across, but let's put that across here. Right. So the first thing that's happened is that if you can see these side by side, this trend line has now disappeared. Okay, because we can't draw a trend line in three dimensions. So that's disappeared. So that's why it's probably useful to have two of them. And you could either toggle between them or you could um, have them side by side. Um, but now that we know there's a correlation between the, um, the, the hours run and the repair cost, we probably can just stick with this here. So what's this telling us? So we can see that early on we've got a low number of defects and we've got a, a low cost. As we go through and the machine continues running, we can see that these, although the defect repair costs are low, the number of actually defects, 22, 24, 27, is quite high. So that to me would suggest that we probably would want to repair these or overhaul these as a as a priority. And in that, 7,000 hours is looking like a fairly kind of decent estimate based on on these um, on the number of defects. This one here we could probably leave for a while. Um, it's, it's it's only had seven defects. They've cost quite a bit, but they haven't yet breached this this value here. So if you're looking to understand well, what piece of equipment should I be looking to overhaul next? then it would probably be these ones here. We might want to leave this one here because it's got, um, it hasn't yet breached this value here. And you might want to look at some of these that have got a higher number of defects because that could be um, harboring some sort of underlying issues that may need to get resolved. So yeah, I mean, it's um, the scatter plot, it's, 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 it's more for exploding data, I would say, than necessarily presenting data on a, on a maybe in a presentation on a dashboard. But um, having said that, it is very visual in nature and you can actually represent three dimensions like we've done here, which is um, which is useful. And in fact, in the next one, we're going to have a fourth dimension because we can use the colour as well. But I'm going to cover that in the next video. OK, so that's a scatter plot. And um, yeah, if you've got any, if you've used it successfully for any applications, then it'd be great to hear about that in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and um, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like, a thumbs up, and if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then feel free to hit the subscribe button and press the little bell to get kept up to date. Okay, so thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you in the next video.